Keratoconus is a disorder affecting the cornea, the clear window of the eye, in which its normal round shape progressively thins, causing a cone-like bulge to develop. Because the cornea does most of the focusing, this change in shape causes significant problems with vision. As the disease gets worse, the cornea gets steeper and vision continues to decline. Keratoconus affects young people. It's normally diagnosed in your late teens or early 20s. It's much more common in black and Asian patients, although we don't understand why that should be. Although we don't understand the causes of keratoconus, fortunately we are in most cases able to improve vision. Early on, this usually means just spectacles or soft contact lenses. As the disease progresses, often hard contact lenses uh, are required to improve vision. And in very advanced cases where contact lenses no longer work, patients will require a corneal transplant to restore vision. And in the past, uh, up to about 20% of all patients needed a transplant at some point during their life. Now all of this has changed with the advent of corneal crosslinking. Uh, and for the first time it means that we're able to intervene early on in the disease process uh, to stop vision loss and prevent deterioration in the future. The treatment begins by gently brushing the surface layer of the cornea clear. Riboflavin drops are then applied to the surface which soak through the cornea before an ultraviolet light is switched on. The ultraviolet light and riboflavin react together to create crosslinks within the cornea, which make it stiffer, mimicking the normal age-related crosslinking effect that occurs from your 30s onwards. Although corneal crosslinking is a great step forward, not every patient with keratoconus will need to have the treatment. We have set up the early keratoconus clinic here at Moorfields to run in the evenings to specifically diagnose and monitor those patients with keratoconus to see if they are progressing. We use corneal scans, vision tests and spectacle prescription to look for changes in their condition. If we do find that there is a change occurring, we can normally list the patient to have the procedure done within a few weeks. Crosslinking is performed as a day case procedure. When you arrive at Moorfields, you will be treated in one of the examination rooms. First, anaesthetic drops are used to numb the surface of your eye. You will be then lowered on the chair before a small clip is placed to keep your eyelids open. No needles or injections are used. The surface skin layer of your eye, called the epithelium, is gently brushed clear and riboflavin drops are applied every few minutes for at least 10 minutes. Following this, an ultraviolet light is shone for 8 minutes. A soft contact lens is placed on your eye at the end of the procedure, which acts as a sort of bandage to keep the eye more comfortable afterwards. This lens will remain in your eye until your follow-up visit. You will then have a final eye check, and your nurse or practitioner will take you through your painkillers. You are then free to go home. So what this means is that for the first time we're able to intervene early and prevent vision loss. We know from clinical trials that a single cross-linking procedure works in about 90% of cases. It's important to remember that cross-linking doesn't cure you, rather it aims to lock in the shape that you have at the time of the procedure and therefore prevent vision loss in the future. Some patients do get an improvement both in the shape of the cornea and in their vision after the treatment, but this is really a bonus. The other thing to remember is that any treatment has risks, and there's about a 3% risk of someone's vision being worse directly as a result of the cross-linking treatment. Yeah, um, it was very interesting. I wasn't quite sure what to expect, um, but it wasn't actually painful, the procedure itself. Um, it was more, it felt like your eyes were not under your control anymore, but um, the local anaesthetic drops worked straight away. It was as comfortable as I could imagine it could have gone for someone messing around with your eyes, really. I'd say the first uh, day, um, the day of the procedure afterwards, um, was the most uncomfortable adjusting to the bright lights. Um, and your muscles obviously feeling a bit strange after the anaesthetic. So once the anaesthetic wore off, um, that was the most um, painful time. But the next morning when I woke up, um, I didn't need any additional pain medi medication um, and I only took what was provided anyway. 
so um, it was more of a, a tiredness or an ache of the eye so I did end up wearing sunglasses most of the time um, kept my eyes closed and then um, I was got to sleep a lot and every time I woke up I felt better um, so in general I'd say the worst day was the, the day of the procedure um, and then maybe the day after that but every other day I've not had had actual eye pain just fatigue so I was called in um, almost a week exactly um, since the, the original procedure and I was met by, by the um, nurse who actually did the procedure and straight away she, I could see that she recognised me, she could see I recognised her which is a good thing um, because my vision was all over the place for the first few days um, and she was happy that my eyes were white so it showed there, there was no infection there. Um, she went through quite, quite a quick follow-up, um, did my vision again, took the bandage lenses out and uh, was, was very happy that I could actually see about 80% um, of what my original vision was and then the rest of the, the vision she said should come back within the next few weeks. Uh, first impressions are yes because um, I'm healing every day and I feel like it's going the way it should have done um, but I suppose the only thing long term is, is I'll only know in a year whether the first procedure has been a success or whether I might need it again but um, so far I'm, I'm happy I've had it done and I've actually got a twin brother who um, needs to go get checked up to see if he has the same thing so I wouldn't hesitate to recommend he gets it done because um, if it can protect your eyes from getting worse, then um, yeah, definitely, definitely go through it.